welcomed this kind of Silicon Valley, especially on this second day of Purushottam Mas, which is an ideal time to intensify one's spiritual practice. So we have the great benefit of being here in this, spir in this spiritual oasis, this kind of Silicon Valley. And uh, during this month, Purushottam Mas, it's a good idea to chant at least one chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day and also one chapter of Bhagavatam. We call this Chad Plus. So we'll start off with uh, doing our chapter of the Bhagavad Gita in case anything else happens in the world. At least we'll have done that. And then we'll uh, proceed to our chapter of Bhagavatam. So let's together chant the um, eighth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, which one are they doing in Chad? How did I know that? Okay, so eight chapter of Bhagavad Gita, and then we'll chant the prayers of Queen Kunti together. Does that sound fair? And welcome to everybody who's joined us online from various places around the world. This is Bhagavad Gita as is chapter eight, attaining supreme Taraka Brahma Yoga. And apparently we're starting with the English. Arjuna inquired altogether, O oh my Lord, O oh Supreme Person, what is Brahman? What is the self? What are fruit of activities? What is this material manifestation? And what are the demigods? Please explain this to me. Who is the Lord of sacrifice and how does he live in the body, O Madhusudana? And how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? The Supreme Personality of God had said, the indestructible transcendental living entity is called Brahman and his eternal nature is called the Dhyatma, the self. Action pertaining to the development of the material bodies of the living entities is called karma, or fruitive activities. O oh, best of the embodied beings, the physical nature, which is constantly changing, is called Adibhuta, the material manifestation. The universal form of the Lord, which includes all the demigods, like those of the sun and moon, is called Adidaiva. And I, the Supreme Lord, represented as the super soul in the heart of every embodied being, am called Adi Yagya, the Lord of Sacrifice. And whoever at the end of his life quits his body remembering me alone at once attains my nature, of this there is no doubt. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, O son of Kunti, that state he will attain without fail. Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. With your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. He who meditates on me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me, undeviated from the path, he, O Partha, is sure to reach me. One should meditate upon the Supreme Person as the one who knows everything, as he who is the oldest, who is the controller, who is smaller than the smallest, who is the maintainer of everything, who is beyond all material conception, who is inconceivable, and who is always a person. He is luminous like the sun, and he is transcendental beyond this material nature. One who, at the time of death, fixes his life air between the eyebrows and by the strength of yoga with an undeviating mind engages himself in remembering the Supreme Lord in full devotion, will certainly attain to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Persons who are learned in the Vedas, who utter omkara, and who are great sages in the renounced order enter into Brahman. Desiring such perfection, one practices celibacy, I shall now briefly explain to you this process by which one may attain salvation. The yogic situation is that of detachment from all sensual engagements. Closing all the doors of the senses and fixing the mind on the heart and the life air at the top of the head, one establishes himself in yoga. After being situated in this yoga practice and vibrating the sacred syllable Om, the supreme combination of letters if one thinks of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, 
and quits his body, he will certainly reach the spiritual planets. For one who always remembers me without deviation, I am easy to obtain, O Sundaprata, because of his constant engagement in devotional service. After attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world which is full of miseries because they have attained the highest perfection. From the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place. But one who attains to my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. By human calculation, a thousand ages taken together form the duration of Brahma's one day, and such also is the duration of his night. At the beginning of Brahma's day, all living entities become manifest from the unmanifest state, and thereafter, when the night falls, they are merged into the unmanifest again. Again and again, when Brahma's day arrives, all living entities come into being, and with the arrival of Brahma's night, they are helplessly annihilated. Yet there is another unmanifest nature, which is eternal and is transcendental to this manifested and unmanifested matter. It is supreme and is never annihilated. When all in this world is annihilated, that part remains as it is. That which the Vedantas describe as unmanifest and infallible, that which is known as the supreme destination, that place from which, having attained it, one never returns, that is my supreme abode. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is greater than all, is attainable by unalloyed devotion. Although he is present in his abode, he is all-pervading, and everything is situated within him. O oh, best of the Paratas, I shall now explain to you the different times at which, passing away from this world, the yogi does or does not come back. Those who know the Supreme Brahman attain that Supreme by passing away from the world during the influence of the fiery God, in the light, at an auspicious moment of the day, during the fortnight of the waxing moon, or during the six months when the sun travels in the north. The mystic who passes away from this world during the smoke, the night, the fortnight of the waning moon, or the six months when the sun passes to the south, reaches the moon planet, but again comes back. According to Vedic opinion, there are two ways of passing from this world, one in light and one in darkness. When one passes in light, he does not come back, but when one passes in darkness, he returns. Although the devotees know these two paths, O Arjuna, they are never bewildered. Therefore, always be, fixed, be always fixed in devotion. A person who accepts the path of devotional service is not bereft of the results derived from studying the Vedas, performing sacrifices, undergoing austerities, giving charity, or pursuing philosophical and fruitive activities. Simply by performing devotional service, he attains all these, and at the end, he reaches the supreme eternal abode. Ata Ashtamo Adyayaha Arjuna Vacha Kim Tad Brahma Kim Adyatmam Kim Karma Purushotama Adibutam Chikim Proktam Adidaivam Kimuchite Adiyagya Katam Kotra Dehes Min Madasudana Rayana Kale Chakatam Geyosi Niatatma Bihi Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Aksharam Brahma Paramam Subhavo Dhyatma Muchite Bhuta Bhavo Bhavakaro Visarga Karma Sanjitaha Adibhutam Sharo Bhava Purushash Chari Daivatam Adiyagyo Hame Vatra Dehe Deha Bratambara Antakale Chama Meva Smaran Mukva Kalevaram Yaprayati samad bhavam yati nasyatra sankshayaha. Yang yang vapi smaran bhavam tajatyante kalevaram tam tame vaite kaunteya sadatad bhava bhavitaha. 
Tasmat sarveshu kaleshu, mama nusmara yudyacha, mayarpata mano budhir, mami vaishyasya samshayaha. Abhyasa yoga yuktena, chetasa nanya gamina, paramam purusham divyam, yati partanu chintayan. Kavim purana manushashitaram, anonariyam samanusmeredyaha. Sarvasya dhataram achintya rupam, aditya varnam tamasaparastad. Prayana kale manasachalena, bhaktya yukto yoga balena chayva. Pruvor madye pranam avesha samyak, satam param purusham upaiti divyam. Yadaksharam veda vado vadanti, Vashanti yad yatayo vita raga, Yadich chanto brahmacharyam charanti, Tate padam sangrahena pravakshe, Saravadwarani samyam ya, Manohridi narudyacha, Mudyadhaya mana pranam, Astito yogadharanam. Om ite kaksharam brahma, Vyaharan ma manusmaran, Ya prayati tajandeham, sayati paramangatim. Ananya cheta satatam, yo man smarati nitya shaha, tasyaham sulaba parta, nitya yukta se yogi naha. Mamu peta punar janma, dukalayam ashashvatam, napluvanti mahatmana, samsidhim paramangataha. Abhrama bhuvana loka, punar avarti no arjuna, mamu petya tu kanteya, punar janma navidyate. Sahasra yuga paryantam, arhad yad brahmano viduhu, ratram yuga sahasrantam, teho ratra vido janaha. Avyaktad vyaktaya sarva, prabhavatya haragame, Ratyaga me praliyante, tatrai vavyak de samjake. Huta grama sa evayam, putva putva praliyate, ratyaga me vasha parta, prabhavatya haraga me. Parastas matu bhavo nyo, vyakto vyaktat sanatanaha, yasak sarveshu bhuteshu, nashyat suna vinashyati. Avyakto shara it yuktas, tamahu paramam gatim, yam prapya nanivartante, tadama paramam mama. Purushasa para parta, vakti labyas tuananyaya, yasyanta stani bhutani, yena sarva midam tatam. Yatrakale tuanavratim, avratim chai vayoginaha, Prayata yanti tam karam, vakshami bharatarshaba. Agnir jyotir ahashukla, shanmasa utarayanam, tatra prayata gachchanti, brahma brahma vidojanaha. Dhumo ratris tata krishna, shanmasa dakshanayanam, tatra chandramasam jyotir, yogi prapya nivartate. Shukla Krishne Kati Hyete, Jagata Shashvate Mate, Ekaya Yatyanavratim, Anyaya Vartate Punaha. Naite Srati Parta Janan, Yoki Buyati Kashchana, Tasmat Sarve Shukaleshu, Yoga Yukto Bhavarjuna. Vedeshu Yagne Shutapasu Chaiva, Dane Shu Yat Punya Palam Pratishtam, Atyeti tat sarva midam vaditva, yogi param stanam upaiti chadyam. Om tat sariti srimad bhagavad gita supanishatsu, brahma vidyayam yoga shastre, shri krishna arjuna sambade, taraka brahma yogo nama ashtamodhyayaha, hari ii om. Now, Purushottam month, and during this month, we recommend that one practice, not just chad or chanting a chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day, but chad plus. 
which means a chapter of Bhagavad Gita uh, plus a chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam. So now we're going to chant the prayers of Queen Kunti, and you'll have your free day of Chad Plus. First day is completely free, no obligation. After that, it'll cost you. It's forthcoming, right? Just now coming? Queen Kunti. Oh, we're doing first count of eighth chapter? Oh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Keep scrolling down. We're doing her prayers particularly. Okay, starting with 18. Srimati Kunti said, O Krishna, I offer my obeisances unto you because you are the original personality and are unaffected by the qualities of the material world. You are existing both within and without everything, yet you are invisible to all. <clears throat> Being beyond the range of limited sense perception, you are the eternally irreproachable factor covered by the curtain of deluding energy. You are invisible to the foolish observer exactly as an actor dressed as a player is not recognized. You yourself descend to propagate the transcendental service, science of devotional service under the hearts of the advanced transcendentalists and mental speculators who are purified by being able to discriminate between matter and spirit. How then can we women know you perfectly? We don't have a PowerPoint of this? Really? Well, that's not good. I don't know. All right, back to the uh, database. We'll find it later or create it. There it is, complete, for all your Prushottamas needs. <laughs> you yourself descend to propagate the transcendental science of devotional service <clears throat> into the hearts of the advanced transcendentalists and mental speculators who are purified by being able to discriminate between matter and spirit. How then can we women know you perfectly? Let me therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto the Lord, who has become the son of Vasudev, the pleasure Devaki, the boy of Nanda, and the other cowherd men of Vrindavan, and the enlivener of the cows and the senses. My respectful obeisances are unto you, O Lord, whose abdomen is marked with a depression like a lotus flower, who are always decorated with garlands of lotus flowers, whose glance is as cool as the lotus and whose feet are engraved with lotuses. O Rishikesh, master of the senses and lord of lords, you have released your mother, Devaki, who is long imprisoned and distressed by the envious King Kamsa, and me and my children from a series of constant dangers. My dear Krishna, your lordship has protected us from a poisoned cake, from a great fire, from cannibals, from the vicious assembly, from sufferings during our exile in the forest and from the battle where great generals fought. And now you have saved us from the weapon of Ashvatama. I wish that all those calamities would happen again and again so that we could see you again and again, for seeing you means that we will no longer see repeated births and deaths. My Lord, your Lordship can easily be approached, but only by those who are materially exhausted. One who was on the path of material progress, trying to improve himself with respectable parentage, great opulence, high education, and bodily beauty, cannot approach you with sincere feeling. My obeisances are unto you, who are the property of the materially impoverished. You have nothing to do with the actions and reactions of the material modes of nature. You are self-satisfied, and therefore you are the most gentle and are the master of the monists. My Lord, I consider your Lordship to be eternal time. 
the supreme controller without beginning and end, the all-pervasive one, in distributing your mercy, you are equal to everyone. The dissensions between living beings are due to social intercourse. O oh Lord, no one can understand your transcendental pastimes, which appear to be human and so are misleading. You have no specific object of favor, nor do you have any object of envy. People only imagine that you are partial. Of course, it is bewildering, O oh soul of the universe, that you work, though you are inactive, and that you take birth, though you are the vital force of the unborn. You yourself descend amongst animals, men, sages, and aquatics. Verily, this is bewildering. My dear Krishna, Yashoda took up a rope to bind you when you committed an offense, and your perturbed eyes over flooded with tears, which washed the mascara from your eyes. And you were afraid, though fear personified is afraid of you. This sight is bewildering to me. Some say that the unborn is born for the glorification of pious kings, and others say that he is born to please King Yadu, one of your dearest devotees. You appear in his family as Sandwood appears in the Malaya Hills. Since both Vasudev and Devaki prayed for you, you have taken birth as their son. Undoubtedly you are unborn, yet you take your birth for their welfare and to kill those who are envious of the demigods. Others say that the world, being overburdened like a boat at sea, is much aggrieved, and that Prama, who is your son, prayed for you, and so you have appeared to diminish the trouble. And yet others say that you appeared for the sake of rejuvenating the devotional service of hearing, remembering, worshiping, and so on, in order that the conditioned souls suffering from material pangs might take advantage and gain liberation. O oh, Krishna, those who continuously hear, chant, and repeat your transcendental activities or take pleasure in others doing so, certainly see your lotus feet, which alone can stop the repetition of birth and death. O oh, my Lord, you have executed all duties yourself. Are you leaving us today, though we are completely dependent on your mercy and have no one else to protect us, now when all kings are at enmity with us? As the name and fame of a particular body is finished, with the disappearance of the living spirit. Similarly, if you do not look upon us, all our fame and activities, along with the Pandavas and Yadus, will end at once. O Godadhar, Krishna, our kingdom is now being marked by the impressions of your lotus feet, and therefore it appears beautiful. But when you leave, it will no longer be so. All these cities and villages are flourishing in all respects because the herbs and grains are in abundance. The trees are full of fruits, the rivers are flowing, the hills are full of minerals, and the oceans full of wealth. And this is all due to your glancing over them. <clears throat> o Lord of the universe, soul of the universe, O personality of the form of the universe, please therefore sever my tie of affection for my kinsmen, the Pandavas and the Vrishnis. O Lord of Matu, as the Ganges forever flows to the sea without hindrance, let my attraction be constantly drawn unto you without being diverted to anyone else. <clears throat> o Krishna, O friend of Arjuna, O chief amongst the descendants of Brishni, you are the destroyer of those political parties which are disturbing elements on this earth. Your prowess never deteriorates. You are the proprietor of the transcendental abode, and you descend to relieve the distresses of the cows, the brahmanas, and the devotees. You possess all mystic powers and you are the preceptor of the entire universe. You are the almighty God, and I offer you my respectful obeisances. Sudha Goswami said, the Lord thus hearing the prayers of Kunti Devi, composed in choice words for his glorification, mildly smiled. That smile was as enchanting as his mystic power. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. May we have the Sanskrit? Kuntiyuvacha. Namaste Purusham Tadyam Ishvaram Prakate Param Alakshyam Sarva Bhutanam Antarbahir Avastitam. 
maya javani gachchanam ajnad hoksajam avyayam nalakshya se mura drusha nato natya daroyata tata paramaham sanam munina mamalatmanam bhakti yoga vidhanartam katam pashima histriyaha krishnaya vasudevaya devaki nandanayacha nanda gopakumaraya Govindaya namo namaha Nama Pankaja Nabhaya Nama Pankaja Maline Nama Pankaja Nitraya Namaste Pankajangraye Yata Rishi Kesha Kalena Devaki Kamsena Ruta Ticharam Shucharpita Vimo Chitaham Cha Sahatma Javibo Vayaiva natena muhurva padganad. Vishan mahagne purushara darshanad. Asat sabaya vanavasa kritshrata. Mrade mrade neka maharatasrato. Dronyasratas chasma hare birakshita. Vipadak santuta shashvat. Tatra tatra jagat guru. Bhavato darshanam yatsyad. Apunar Bhavadarshanam Janmaishvarya Shruta Shribir Edamana Manakpuman Naivar Hatyar Vidatum Vai Twama Kinchana Gocharam Namo Kinchana Vittaya Nifrata Gunavrittaye Atmaramaya Shantaya Kaivalya Pataye Namaha Manye Tam Kalami Shadam Anani nidanam bibhum, samam charantam sarvatra, bhutanam yan mitakalihi. Naveda kaschit bhagavam shakirshitam, tave hamana sendranam vidambanam. Nayasa kaschit daitos tikarichit, dwe shascha yasmin vishamamatindranam. Janma karma chivishvatmam. Ajastya Karturatmanaha Tiryan Risheshu Yadusu Tadadyanta Vibandanam Gopyadade Twai Kritagasi Dhamatavad Yate Dashashu Kalilanjana Sambramaksham Vaktram Naniya Bhavabhava Nayasti Tasya Samam Vimoha Yate Birapi Yad Bipeti Kechir Ahur Ajam Jatam Punya shloka sikirtaye, yadu priyasyan vavaye, malayasye vachandanam. Apare vasudevasya, devakyam yachitobya gad, ajastam asyashe maya, vadhaya chasuradusham. Bharava taranayanye, bhuvanava ivodadao, sidantya bhuribharena, Jato hyatma buvartitaha Pavesmin klishamananam Avidyakam akarma bi Shravanas maranarhani Karishan itikechana Shrinvanti gayanti granantya bhikshnasha Smaranti nandanti tavehitam jana Te eva pasyantya vacharena tavakam Bhava pravaho paramam padam bujam Apyadyanastram svakritehita prabho Jihasasi svit surido nujivina Yesham na chanyad bhavatak padam bujad Parayanam rajasu yojitam hasam Kevayam namarupabhyam Yadubi saha pandava Bhavato darshanam yarhi Hrishikanam iveshituhu Neyam shobhishite tatra yate danim gadadhara tvatpararan kita bhati svalakshana valakshitai. Ima jana parasvridha supakaushati virudaha manadri nadyudanvanto hidhante tava vikshitai. Hatha vishvesha vishvatman vishvamurte sukeshu me Sneya pasham imam chindi, dridam pandu shu vrishni shu. Tvai me nanya vishaya, matir madu pate sakrit, ratin udvahatad adda, gangevaugam udanvati. 
Shri Krishna Krishna Saka Vrishta Rishabhava Nidrug Rajanya Vamsha Dahana Napavarga Virya Govinda Godvija Sarati Haravatara Yogeshvara Kila Guru Bhagavan Namaste Sutuvacha Pratyate Tam Kala Pradai Praninata Kilodaya Mandam Chahasa Vaikunto Mohanam Iva Mayuya Mayaya Mandam Chahasa Vaikunto. That's nice. Chad plus ki jai. Chad plus means one chapter of Bhagavad Gita and one chapter of Bhagavatam every day. At least for Purushottam Mas. Okay? Yes. You'll do it? Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Oma jnana timarandasya jnananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam jena tasmai shri gurave namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Gaur Premanande Hare Bo Gaura Hare Bo Gaura Hare Bo Gaura Hare Bo I saw a car go by is this with a Honda or a, um, what's the other one? Toyota? Yeah, Toyota, Honda. It's called a transverse, such a thing. Traverse? It's a traverse. I was just thinking how living entities always want to go somewhere. They're moving around. I, I just caught my eye as I was walking across the street near my house. Oh. Toyota Traverse. That's what it's called? Chevy. Well, whatever it is, everyone wants to go somewhere. And it traverse. They want to uh, cross over somewhere. And it's the whole idea. People try to get in a vehicle and cross into a different environment. But the material world is a, an enclosed environment. There's no real place for you to go. You have to do it by transforming your own consciousness. And this is it's ultimately satisfying, even to know that one's on the uh, path of traversing the material world. Look up the word traverse. So Bhagavad Gita gives a, a very clear idea that there are these different realms. We heard it in the eighth chapter that Krishna says, this material world he describes as an endlessly mutable place. It's always being created and destroyed. In fact, there are various kinds of destruction that take place of the world. Some of, them are, some of the destructions are partial. Half of it gets wrecked. And the other um, is a complete destruction. And then there's another one described, which is called continuous. That means that everything that we have uh, is being destroyed at every minute, right before our eyes, including this body. And then Krishna describes parastasmatu bhavo nyo vyakto vyaktat sanatana yaksaksar veshubhuteshu nashyatsu navinashati. There's another realm which is not destructible. It's, uh, it's beyond this realm. One has to traverse this realm. What's the word mean? Um, so traverse as a verb means travel across or through. That's what I thought, travel across or through. Mm. Trying to break through the other side in a Chevy. It's not going to make it <laughs> to the other side. You're not going to go from the world. That the, in fact, that thing's going to break down, and you're going to be sad because it broke. Uh, we want to traverse. And where does it come from? The origin is Middle English, and also the, from the old French traverser, from the late Latin traversere, and the noun is from the old French traverse, which means ma traverse, masculine, and traverse, feminine, par par partly based on traverser. I also looked up travel. You want me to look up? What? Travel? travel? Yeah, traverse, travel. That's where traverse comes from? 
So it said it's linked to um, part, partly based on based on Trevor Sir. Okay, that's close enough. It's just uh, I was just noticing that that's the the emphasis of the soul. It wants to cross over somehow, and uh, the Gita gives the real technology how to do that. You have to reform your consciousness. In fact, the book that Prabhupada wrote called Easy Journey to Other Planets has been a, a perennial favorite. People see that and they want to uh, understand how to do that, how to get out of here. Prabhupada mentions that when he wrote that book, it was very popular and somebody asked him about it. He said, uh, you know, will this help me go to some other place, you know, get out of this planet in the atmosphere. And Prabhupada said, yes. And he, and he said, uh, then can I come back again afterwards? And Prabhupada said, no, you can't come. He said, oh, I, I don't want to. <laughs> and Prabhupada also mentioned how when the Russians went up in their Sputnik, that's a spaceship, it went out of the atmosphere apparently. And then Prabhupada noticed that as it was circling the Earth, the uh, astronaut was looking out and he was saying, there's my Moscow. So even though he had left the environment of the earth, he was still attached. So uh, in the chapter 8 that we just read, Krishna is describing the way in which our consciousness is creative. And because of the force of the various states of our consciousness, we create various environments for ourselves. Because the uh, material nature is accommodating us. According to our consciousness, we get accommodated. So if one practices Krishna consciousness by putting spiritual songs on one's phone, by uh, <laughs> chanting Chad Plus every day, and um, eating spiritual food stuff, in fact, one of the austerities for this month, I, I think you'll like this, is you're, you're supposed to take Mahaprasadam every day. Did you know that? Okay, can you handle that? Try to get Mahaprasad. You're supposed to take Mahaprasad every day for Purushottam Mas. Okay? Nobody's complaining? So, uh, then the, he was looking out and seeing, where is my Moscow? And he's still attached. So, uh, one has to transfer one's attachment from the gross bodily, bodily um, platform and the subtle bodily platform to the spiritual platform by becoming attached to Krishna. So the process of bhakti means to become more and more aware of one's nature as a, an eternal servant of Krishna. And then to direct one's uh, desires and uh, essential activities, whatever we're doing with our sen senses, that means, uh, to serving Krishna in practical ways and also ways in, in planning, the kinds of things that we plan, they're all for Krishna. And uh, by doing this, one gradually becomes, one's attention goes uh, towards Krishna. And because Krishna is all attractive, one begins to develop an attachment for Krishna rather than for one's body and the thoughts within one's mind and all the things attached to, to one's uh, bodily conception of life. Otherwise, the, the Vedas say that the bodily conception of life is for animal-like people. Yasyasti buddhi kunapetri datuke swadik kalatradi shubhoma ijati. So, um, what's the next line? Yasya mabuddhi kunapetri datuke swadik kalatradi shubhoma ijati. Yatirta buddhi salilena karichit. Jnaneshu Saeva Gokara. So, this verse, it's spoken by Krishna at Kurukshetra, uh, says that the, um, the, the buddhi or the intelligence, Yasyasma buddhi kunapetri datuke, that thinks that uh, this body, which is made of mucus, bile, and air, is the self. <laughs> And that also thinks that uh, one's uh, hometown and home country and home team, for that matter, is worshipable. And uh, who goes to the um, holy places just to take bath in the water there, but doesn't visit holy people. All these are symptoms of a person in very low consciousness. 
So Eva Gokura, in fact, the, 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 uh, he says that your mentality is like a, an animal, like an ass or a cow. So one has to elevate oneself from this kind of consciousness, bodily consciousness, which is pervasive in this world. It may be dressed up by various kinds of um, uh, uh, external aesthetics. Uh, for instance, uh, there's art and literature, and there are um, ways in which one can uh, dress up one's body and go dancing around the world. Uh, but because they're all uh, driven by a desire to enjoy the body, mind, and senses and remain attached to the material world, these are all uh, considered uh, only dressing a dead body. So in America, what happens in, in many places is when somebody dies, then uh, they take the body to a morgue and they pump it full of formaldehyde so the body is uh, preserved. It's a preservative that's in a lot of soft drinks. And uh, not to freak anybody out, but don't drink soft drinks. Um, then uh, then they, as they bring in a, a dresser and they comb, comb the guy's hair and they put makeup on him and stuff like that. And put a nice suit, nice shoes, uh, sharp looking watch. And they put him nice in the casket. And then everyone comes and looks and it's like, oh, he looks so nice. But he's a de it's a dead body. It doesn't make any difference. So the Shastra says that this whole bodily conception of life is like dressing up a, a dead body. So the essence of life is taught in the Srimad Bhagavatam by Shukadeva Goswami that one has to uh, identify oneself as a servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he starts off by teaching Parikshit Maharaj, his student, to look at the universe in a different way. Look at the world as the body of God. So when you look out into the world, don't look out and, and think, oh, I'd like to build my house over there and uh, own this big piece of property. But try to see that it's the Lord's body everywhere. And he gives a description of, does Shukadeva Goswami to preach at Maharaj, the universal form of the Lord. For instance, the mountains, he says these are the stacks of the bones of the universal form. And the rivers are the uh, veins on the universal form, and the trees are the hairs on his body. And uh, he also teaches him to uh, see that the uh, material nature is offering all kinds of facilities to us, and we don't need to work so hard in order to... Uh, uh, feel satisfaction. In fact, he says, notice that the uh, um, trees are giving fruits, the streams are giving water, there's uh, plenty of places to lie down and sleep and so forth. You don't have to work so hard. So then he begins to describe the way in which uh, a person who starts to become aware of, of God within the universe uh, then can uh, begin with a peaceful mind to transfer uh, his or her intelligence to the super soul within the heart and actually observe the uh, beautiful bodily features of the Supreme Personality of God who resides within the heart. And by fixing one's mind on this form of the Supreme, then one becomes enchanted and one becomes purified. And so this in the second chapter, the second canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, we have the first chapter, which is called uh, The First Step in God Realization. And uh, within this, Ashukadev mentions the importance of hearing Krishna Kata. So, this is one uh, sustaining a process in bhakti. You have to hear Krishna Kata. And by hearing about uh, Krishna from there's two kinds of Krishna Kata, right? What are the two kinds? One is about Krishna. Tell me something about Krishna. Use the mic. Share. Sharing means caring. <laughs> uh, Krishna holds a flute in his hand and he has a peacock feather. He's a um, source of all. He's a reservoir of pleasure. So it's very interesting to note. Krishna plays a flute. He's got a peacock feather. He also walks around with bare feet in the forest and he has cows. And there's, this is about Krishna. 
And there's a, a lot of information about Krishna. And what's the other kind of Krishna kata? What is it? Spoken by Krishna. Spoken by Krishna, or the philosophy of Krishna consciousness, which leads one to, to Krishna. Which, what would be an example of that? From Bhagavad. the Bhagavatam. Somebody, tell us. Yes. Uh, the 11th canto, the Uddhav Gita, when Krishna speaks to Uddhava. Yes, Uddhava. In the 11th canto, who else teaches in the 11th canto about the process of self realization in Krishna consciousness? The, the Nava Yogendras. Who are the Nava Yogendras? Name them for a free flower garland or a trip to. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Kavi, Havi. Kavi, Havi. Shri and Riksha, and no, I don't know. You better. Get that one. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the Navi Yogendras are there, and th their teachings are fascinating. If you read these teachings of the Navi Yogendra, this is Christian Kata, because it's all about the science of self realization and how one can extricate one from this world, the qualifications of, of pure devotees. It also describes our, the way in which we become entangled in the material world, doesn't it? The, these very important verses from, uh, from the uh, Kavi, Havi, Kavi Yogendra, and so on. So there's a, a virtual gold mine of, of Krishna Kata in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And if one gets uh, accustomed to, uh, even attached to reading the Bhagavatam every day, then one is following the process of bhakti. And this is uh, the, the first and most essential part of bhakti is to hear Krishna Kata. So you can read Bhagavad Gita, and there's uh, teachings by Krishna. There's also information by other uh, great liberated souls that you can hear. There are even conversations that you can listen in on. Do you like to do that to, to people sometimes? Do you ever listen in on conversations? <laughs> Come on, admit it. You like walking by and you're like, what are they talking about? So people like that. That's why people like to watch TV shows about you know, families and the people sitting around and listen to what they're talking about. But that's the mundane sense. But when you, when you read the Bhagavatam, you'll see that you're able to listen in on conversations by the, the topmost um, pure devotees and elevated souls. For instance, give me a, for instance, a, a couple of conversations that take place in the Bhagavatam that we get to listen in on by reading Bhagavatam. Shukadeva and Parikshit. Yes. What else? Who else is talking? Sutta Goswami and who? Sages of Namasharya. And the sages of Namasharya. That's a very interesting scenario where uh, the sages are there. They're trying to perform these fruit of sacrifices and uh, it's not working for them. Uh, they're just getting smoke and they're realizing that that uh, it's, it's a struggle. And then they start to hear from Sutta Goswami. And they realize, oh, this is important. This person is elevated. So they glorify him. And then uh, they tell him that, you know all the essence of the Vedic literature. You please en enlighten us. So they, they, we get to hear that conversation. What other conversations? Huh? Judd, Bart, and Maharaj Rahugana. Oh, that is a fascinating conversation. So Judd Bharat is this um, highly elevated soul, but he's acting retarded from the very beginning of his life because he doesn't want to get mixed up in the material world anymore. So he acts as if he's incompetent in all aspects. But then finally he meets this king who insults him, and then finally Judd Bharat speaks up. What a drama that is. And then they have this conversation, and the king surrenders to Judd Bharat, and Judd Bharat gives him these intricately and uh, amazingly effective uh, instructions about spiritual life, right? So all this we have access to, this Krishna Kata. So it's highly recommended that anyone who wants to progress in bhakti should make a thorough study of at least the Bhagavad Gita. How many verses? Seven hundred, Seven hundred verses, that's no problem. That You can do that, 700 verses. You can cover that on a regular basis, right? Yeah, and then Bhagavatam, 18,000 verses. But if you just apply yourself a little bit every day, invest the same amount of time in the Bhagavatam that most people invest in watching Netflix, 
then you, you'll become a great sage. And then uh, there's the nectar of devotion. And you can read that again and again. It gives the science of Krishna consciousness. Then um, what else do we have? Chaitanya Charitamrita, postgraduate study of the of the Srimad Bhagavatam, maybe a couple more. Well, Krishna book summary of the 10th canto, obviously should read that. Nectar of Instruction, Sri Shapanishad, a few books like that. You can set up your library and go through those on a regular basis and, and hear it. So that's Krishna Kata uh, on, from, on both sides. So that's Bhakti. And then uh, Shukadev talks about the activities of envious householders. So there's two terms. One is called Grahasta and the other is called Griyameti. So what's the difference? Someone tell me the difference between the two. Grahasta and Griyameti. Yes. Monisha, you got the mic. Go ahead. I think uh, Grahasta is when um, it's a household. Um, people are practicing, practicing spiritual life in a household. And then Griya Medi is like a sannyasi who practices in temple, I think. Uh, 50% right. <laughs> okay, so, okay, you want to go for it? Yeah. Griya Medi is a, uh, is a householder who practices sense gratification in uncontrolled or unauthorized way. Grihasta lives in a house and reads Bhagavatam. A Griya Medi lives in a house and watches Netflix. <laughs> so once there was a, a grahasta, and there weren't very many in the old days. It was all brahmacharis. In fact, most temples you just see one big sea of orange. And anybody who lived outside the temple was a rarity. In fact, we had a name for them. We called them fringes. <laughs> Since you were on the fringe. So once in uh, Detroit, Michigan, Prabhupada was visiting and there was a whole room full of brahmacharis and sannyasis. And there was one uh, poor grahasta there. And he said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, what can I do? I live in a house outside. I have three kids. I have to work. And uh, how can I be Christian conscious? And how can I serve you? And Prabhupada said, your house is made of brick and stone. And this temple is made of brick and stone. He said, the activity in the temple is hearing Krishna Kata, doing devotional service. If the activity in your house is hearing Krishna Kata and doing devotional service, no difference. So the grahasta sets up a, an ashrama in, and the house and all the activities, children, everyone, they're centered around serving Krishna. That's a grahasta. And Griyamedi has a, a vrat to stay in the material world and try to center life around sense gratification. So that's the difference. So um, Shukadeva Goswami explains that there's going to be a different result in your life if you're a Griyamedia or you're a Grihasta. And um, he talks quite a bit because about this kind of attachment because don't forget who Shukadeva Goswami is. What was his childhood like? Did he get a lot of toys? Did he go to Disneyland? Did he, what did he do in his childhood? He didn't have a childhood. He grew up in the womb till he was 16. And then when he came out, he took off running. And his father called, come back. I just want to give you a sacred thread. And no thanks. And he just left. And um, he went off to the forest. He was a complete renunciate from the time he was born until he heard the Bhagavatam. And then he realized there was a higher calling. He's heard that sound. Even though he was liberated from any attraction to the material world, he had no interest whatsoever, but he had a great interest in Bhagavatam. And this is one of the great themes of the Bhagavatam, that this sound vibration is attractive to those who are already liberated from material life. They have no interest in material life at all, the topmost being attraction between male and female. He was so renounced that when he he was leaving, walking through the field. There were a bunch of women taking bath, uh, and uh, they didn't even bother to cover themselves because they realized this person has no interest in the material world. It doesn't even see us as bodies. Even when Vyasadeva went by, they covered themselves, but not Shukadeva. So 
we're hearing from him in this second ch uh, chanto of Srimad Bhagavatam, from, he has that kind of edge to him, that this material world is a, a very temporary place, don't get attached to it, don't become a sense enjoyer in this material world. So he goes into uh, detail, as I mentioned, about the universal form, and then he talks about the Lord in the heart, and the third chapter is called Pure Devotional Service, The Change of heart, Change in Heart. And I'm going to read you a couple of purports from this section called uh, The Lord in the Heart. And this will be 2 to 30. And when you're hearing this, what's it called? Shravadam. And what are you hearing? Krishna Kata. I have a friend who he says uh, like Krishna Kata. And it, it always sounds like a drink. And it, actually it is. In the beginning of the Bhagavatam, it's mentioned Pibhata uh, Bhagavatam Rasamalayam. That this is a drink. And you're supposed to drink it with your ears. For those who are experienced in hearing the Bhagavatam, they develop a taste for it. They're drinking a kind of intoxication. They take it, they go into a, a trance, they uh, faint, and then they wake up and they drink some more. And you never get sick. You just go into more and more ecstasy. So this Bhagavatam is meant to be drunk with your ears. So you, so you can become intoxicated in the love of God by hearing from this. Does it sound good? <laughs> Only $250 for this set. Okay, so 2 two thirty. The devotee thus surpassing the gross and subtle forms of coverings. Now what he's describing here is how uh, a person leaves this material world and abandons the uh, gross and subtle material bodies and then pr prepares to go back home, back to God. And interestingly, he's describing also how there are different routes that uh, devotees take when they leave the world. Some of them like to take the scenic route. They kind of want to see what the material world looks like and all the different aspects as they're leaving. So they want to take a look and others just go directly back. So it's not a stereotype process. There are various uh, uh, predilections that devotees have. The devotee thus surpassing the gross and subtle forms of coverings enters the plane of egoism. And in that status, he merges the material modes of nature, ignorance and passion, in this point of neutralization, and thus reaches egoism and goodness. After this, all egoism is merged in the Mahatattva, and he comes to the point of pure self-realization. So we have this uh, gross and subtle material body, and Lord Kapiladev said, says that one of the ways that one dissolves the subtle body is by performing bhakti. Just as when you eat food and the food is digested. So in a similar way, as you perform devotional service, your subtle body, which is the cause of a, a, a attachment to this material world in various ways, it becomes gradually dissolved by the process of bhakti. Here's Prabhupada's purport. Pure self-realization, as we have several times discussed, is the pure consciousness of admitting oneself to be the eternal servitor of the Lord. Now, I'm going to read that again because this is a, a profound mantra that you can take with you wherever you go. Pure self-realization, as we have several times discussed, is the pure consciousness of admitting oneself to be the eternal servitor of the Lord. Would you like to admit this now? Yes. Go ahead, admit it. Don't read it. I said admit it. Admit that you're the pure servitor of the Lord. Okay, take the microphone. She'd so like to make a statement here in front of everybody in this room and online. Admit it. I am the eternal servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. <laughs> Haribo! So you admitted it. So, again, pure self-realization, as we have several times discussed, is the pure consciousness 
of admitting oneself to be the eternal servant of the Lord. This is something that Bhakti Vinod Thakur uh, writes in one of his songs, in the poem, Jeev Krishna Das A Bishwas Korleto or Dukonai. Just admit that you're the eternal servant of Krishna. And he said, for you, no more duke. You'll be joyful. If you just admit that you're the eternal servant of the Lord and uh, administer service to the Lord, make that your mainstay for, in your life, then you'll be completely happy all the time. Thus one is reinstated in his original position of transcendental loving service of the Lord, as will be clearly explained in the following verse. This stage of rendering transcendental loving service to the Lord without any hopes of emolument, look up the word, from the Lord, or any other way can be attained when the senses, when the material senses are purified and the original pure state of the senses is revived. It is suggested herein that the process of purifying the senses is by the yogic way, namely the gross senses are merged in the mode of ignorance and the subtle senses are merged in the mode of passion. The mind belongs to the mode of goodness and therefore is called devamoy or godly. Perfect purification of the mind is made possible when one is fixed in the conviction of being the eternal servitor of the Lord. Therefore, simple attainment of goodness is also a material mode. One has to surpass this stage of material goodness and reach the point of purified goodness, or Vasudev Sattva. This Vasudev Sattva helps one to enter into the kingdom of God. Emolument, please. Emolument is a salary, a fee, or a profit from employment or office. For example, the director's emoluments. It orig the origin is the late Middle English from Latin emolumentum, originally probably payment to a miller for grinding corn. So without asking anything in return. It's service for service without asking for a salary. We don't want anything from the Lord. Yeah, but <laughs> it also says from emolore, which means to grind up. And I'm just thinking that how much, you know, we get ground. <laughs> There's a lot of grinding that happens before we are paid the salary. You get days. all ground up, yeah. <laughs> That's what they do to you. Once you're all ground up, they give you a little something. We may also remember in this connection that the process of gradual emancipation of what? Gradual. You have to work with me here by the devotees in the manner mentioned above, although authoritative is not viable in the present age because of people's being primarily unaware of yoga pra practice. The so-called yoga practice by the professional protagonist may be physiologically beneficial, but such small successes cannot help one in the attainment of spiritual emancipation as mentioned herein. 5,000 years ago, when the social status of human society was in perfect Vedic order, the yoga process mentioned herein was a common affair for everyone because everyone, as especially, and especially the Brahmanas and Kshatriyas, was trained in the transcendental art under the care of the spiritual master, far away from home in the status of brahmacharya. Modern man, however, is incompetent to understand it perfectly. Well, Better not tell the yoga studios, or maybe we should. This, the Lord Sri Chaitanya, therefore, made it easier for the prospective devotee of the present age in the following specific manner. Ultimately, there is no difference in the result. The first and foremost point is that one must understand the prime importance of bhakti yoga. What is the first and foremost point? You must understand the prime importance of bhakti yoga. The living beings in different species of life are undergoing different terms of engagement according to their fruit of actions and re reactions. But in the execution of different activities, one who secures some resources in bhakti yoga can understand the importance of service to the Lord through the causeless mercy of the Lord 
as well as that of the spiritual master. A sincere soul is helped by the Lord through meeting a bona fide spiritual master, the representative of the Lord. By the instruction of such a spiritual master, one gets the seed of bhakti yoga. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recommends that the devotee sow the seed of bhakti yoga in his heart and nurture it by the watering and he of hearing and chanting the holy name, fame, etc. of the Lord. The simple process of offense offenselessly chanting and hearing the holy name of the Lord will gradually promote one very soon to the stage of emancipation. The stage of what? There are three stages in chanting the holy name of the Lord. Take careful note. Are you ready? Yes. Say yes. yes. The first stage is the offensive chanting of the holy name. And the second is the reflective stage of chanting the holy name. The third stage is the offenseless chanting of the holy name of the Lord. In the second stage only, the stage of reflection between the offensive and offenseless stages one automatically attains the stage of emancipation. And in the offenseless stage, one actually enters into the kingdom of God, although physically he may apparently be within the material world. To attain the offenseless stage, one must be on, the, on guard in the following manner. Okay, so what were the three stages? Please describe. Could you only take one with the microphone, otherwise it becomes non-distinct. The offensive stage, the reflective stage, and the offenseless stage. Okay, and who can give us more information about these uh, different stages? Uh, from what was just stated here, don't add on, but just tell us something that we heard. When we move from offensive to reflective stage, we automatically attain emancipation. So, by chanting Hare Krishna in the reflective stage, which means that you're trying to avoid the offenses, and as you're getting the uh, nourishment from associating with the holy name, one of the uh, side benefits is that you get emancipation, you get liberated from the material world. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Jani Yashavaira Gyam Yanam Chayarahai Tukam. By performing this, Direct process of bhakti, chanting Hare Krishna, then one naturally, automatically, concomitantly gets knowledge and detachment from the world. One becomes emancipated. What else? And from going from, uh, when we enter the state of offenseless chanting, one enters the kingdom of God, although he is physically present in this world. So is it possible to be at uh, Facebook? not watching Facebook, but the, be working at Facebook and then be connected to the spiritual kingdom at the same time? Yes. Say yes. yes. Yeah, definitely. If, how about driving down the 101 freeway? Yes. Because uh, one's uh, attained this connection to the spiritual world, even while living in this body through the process of chanting the holy name, in the offenseless stage. And by this, one first passes through emancipation in the reflective stage and then makes this direct connection to the spiritual world through the process of chanting Hare Krishna. Therefore, uh, the, not only do we have to engage in shravanam, especially hearing from Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nectar Devotion, and a few of the other books, but we also have to regularly chant Hare Krishna. And it's highly recommended that you chant uh, a fixed number of rounds every day. And uh, don't uh, do fewer than uh, you've vowed to do. And if you do that on a regular basis and you're very attentive in chanting, you give your full attention to the process of chanting and then try to avoid the offenses which we're just about to name. And you, you have to organize your life around this a little bit. And then the uh, chanting has a very um, quick effect on our lives. Okay, so here are the ways in which one has to organize one life, one's life in order to take full advantage of the chanting. 
When we speak of hearing and chanting, it means that not only should one chant and hear the holy name of the Lord as Rama, Krishna, or systematically the 16 names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare, but one should also read and hear Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of devotees. So these things have, should go on simultaneously, the chanting and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita in the association of devotees. The primary practice of bhakti yoga will cause the seed already sowed in, in heart to sprout and by regular watering process, a regular watering process, as mentioned above, the bhakti yoga creeper will begin to grow. By systematic nurturing, the creeper will grow to such an extent that it will penetrate the coverings of the universe, as we have heard in the previous verses. Reach the effulgent sky, the Brahma Jyoti, and go farther and farther and reach the spiritual sky, where there are innumerable spiritual planets called Vaikuntha Lokas. Above all of them is Krishna Loka or Goloka Vrindavan wherein the growing creeper enters and takes repose at the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna, the original personality of Godhead. When one re reaches the lotus feet of Lord Krishna at Goloka Vrindavan, the watering process of hearing and reading as also uh, chanting of the holy name in the pure devotional stage fructifies and the fruit grows there in the form of love of God are tangibly tasted by the devotee even though he is here in this material world. The ripe fruits of love of God are relished only by the devotees constantly engaged in the watering process as described above. But the working devotee must always be mindful so that the creeper which he has, which has uh, so grown will not be cut off. Therefore, he should be mindful of the following considerations. Uh, anything that uh, that you wanted to note from what I just read before I go on to the, the what the very specific things that you should avoid while chanting? I was um, Shamlangi Mataji is watching you online, and I was just thinking that you have that famous verse that she recites so nicely from the uh, CC Madhya 19th chapter where it, it it talks about the, the process of Shravan and the, Jean. Shram, Shram Jean. Yeah, uh, that this. Hearing and chanting is uh, like it is the watering of the seed of bhakti within the heart. So this is how you have to cultivate it. So don't think that you can hear and chant too much. Don't think that. And don't think that if you hear and chant so much that your uh, mind might fill up and it, there won't be any room for it. Because Prabhupada explains in the Bhagavatam elsewhere that although the holes of the ear are very small, inside where this sound is going is like the sky. It's unlimited, you can fill it up as much as you like. So don't worry that you're gonna hear and chant too much. Because uh, when you're practicing devotional service, oftentimes the materialistic mind or maybe materialistic relatives will tell you you're doing too much. They'll say, you know, a little bit's okay, but you know, don't ruin your whole life with this bhakti stuff. That's not true. Uh, it's okay. You can overdo it in bhakti. And uh, you can hear more. And it won't fill up. It won't become saturated and then start coming out your ears again. But it'll go in and it'll always have its effect. So feel free to invest all your attention, especially by hearing and chanting from the uh, authorized scriptures and the authorized mantras and do it as much as you like, you'll only benefit more and more. It'll, it'll never uh, become overbearing or uh, ruin your life, like, other, like sense gratification will. But also, as mentioned here, that as you continue your process of hearing and chanting, that you'll experience a transformation in your life. And we, we, uh, there's uh, symptoms that will manifest in you that you'll notice when you become more and more attracted to the process of hearing and chanting. Bhakti Thakur summarizes those in his song, uh, Radha Krishna Bol. Uh, Krishna Bolbe Jabe Pulakhabe Jorbe Anki Bolitai. So 
if you go on chanting, he says, then uh, gradually you'll, you'll start feeling emotions, spiritual emotions. Tears will come to your eyes. Your hair will stand on end. And you, you'll feel uh, ecstasy from chanting Hare Krishna. So now here are the ten offenses to avoid. Number one, offense by one at the feet of a pure devotee may be likened to the mad elephant who devastates a very good garden if it enters. Two, one must be very careful to guard himself against such offenses at the feet of pure devotees, just as one protects a creeper by all-around fencing. Three, it so happens that by the watering process some weeds are also grown, and unless such weeds are uprooted, the nurturing of the main creeper or the creeper of bhakti yoga may be hampered. Four, actually these weeds are material enjoyment, merging of the self in the absolute without separate individuality and many other desires in the field of religion, economic development, sense enjoyment, and emancipation. Five, there are many other weeds like disobedience to the tenets of the revered scriptures, unnecessary engagements, killing animals, and hankering after material gain, prestige, and adoration. Six, are you memorizing all these? Because I'm going to ask. If sufficient care is not taken, then the watering process may only help to breed the weeds, stunting the healthy growth of the main creeper and resulting in no fructification of the ultimate requirement, love of God. Seven, the devotee must therefore be very careful to uproot the different weeds in the very beginning. Only then will the healthy growth of the main creeper not be stunted. Eight, and by so doing, the devotee is able to relish the fruit of love of God and thus live practically with Lord Krishna, even in this life, and be able to see the Lord in every step. The highest perfection of life is to enjoy life constantly in the association of the Lord, and one who can relish this does not aspire after any temporary enjoyment of the material world via other media. So let's just review a few of the points that were made. How many points were made altogether? Okay. Who can remember what some of the points are? Because if, if we can put them into practice, then our chanting will become highly effective. Go ahead. Yes. Nam Smarana. And then we have one online. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. I uh, remembered the point number six, which says, you know, if we are watering the weeds instead of the main creeper, then we will not attain the love of Godhead. It, it won't uh, fructify us. That's right. And there's a section of the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita in which Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu cleans the Gundicha temple. And he cleans it several times, and then he cleans outside so that no dust blows back in. And within that section, uh, Srila Prabhupada gives a, a long purport in which he's paraphrasing his spiritual master, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta, who talks about the various uh, weeds and seeds that uh, can enter into the, the uh, garden of one's heart and take root there that you have to be careful of. Uh, fault finding is one. This is something that one can develop uh, easily enough if one's not careful to guard against it. Uh, one could actually become a professional fault finder. In fact, when you come through immigration and they hand you one of those little forms to fill out on the plane and you're wondering what your occupation is, you could, uh, if, if you're unfortunate enough to develop this uh, career, you could put professional fault finder. Some people have taken this up. There are little universities you can go to where they teach you to find faults where there are none even. This is a great art for demoniac people. And if you, if you fall into fault finding, then uh, you'll find yourself losing your taste for the chanting of Hare Krishna or, or Srimad Bhagavatam because it'll be more interesting to you to find fault with others than to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. This, this happens regularly. Uh, there are others, uh, 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 numerous other, um, in fact, do a search, find Kutinati. I don't remember the verse number, but we can look at a few of them really quickly. Kutinati. It'll bring you right to it. How many of you are 
are searching. What is it? Madhya? 12? 12, 135, that's it. 12, 135. What? Really? Okay. E mata pura dwar age pata jata shokla shodhila taha ke varibe koto. Okay. Outside the gateway of the temple, all the roads were also cleansed, and no one could tell exactly how this was done. In commenting and commenting on the cleansing of the Gunjita temple, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as the world leader, was personally giving instructions on how one should receive Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, within one's cleansed and pacified heart. If one wants to see Krishna seated in his heart, he must first cleanse the heart as prescribed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Shikshashtaka, Cheto Darpana Marjanam. In this age, everyone's heart is especially unclean, as confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam, Hridyantaksto Hipadrani. To wash away all dirty things accumulated within the heart, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advised everyone to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. The first result will be that the heart is cleansed, Cheto Darpana Marjanam. Similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam 1217 confirms this statement. Srimvatam Sukata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hridyan Taksto Hibadrani Vidunoti Suritsatam. Keep scrolling down. Keep going. Okay. Uh, Srila Bhakti Sananta Sarasthuta explains that even though one may become free from the desire for fruit of activity, sometimes the subtle desire for fruit of activity again comes uh, into being within the heart. One often thinks of conducting business to improve devotional activity. But the contamination is so strong that it may later develop into misunderstanding, described as kutinati, fault finding, and pratish tasha, the desire for name and fame and high position, jiva hingsa, envy of other living entities, nishidachara, nidishachara, accepting things forbidden in the shastra, kama, desire for material gain, and puja, hankering for popularity. Um, so uh, there, there's very um, clear descriptions of very subtle ways in which one may become contaminated again. Even as, as one practices the chanting of Hare Krishna, one may become influenced because the material nature is a, a contaminated atmosphere. And it, it's very easy, f just as it is in a garden, uh, that is, begins as a pristine field to be filled up with all kinds of weeds. So one has to be vigilant as one's chanting to remove the uh, subtle desires that enter within one's heart. Uh, constantly, you have to be vigilant. Otherwise, the, the uh, garden will become ruined. It will become overrun. Like sometimes people practice devotional service for a long time, and then uh, they think, uh, you know, I... People owe me for this. I've done it for so many years. Like I should be paid millions of dollars for performing this devotional service for so many years. Look what I've done. And then uh, one forgets the whole purpose of uh, performing service selflessly uh, to please the Lord. And this can happen over uh, a course of a lifetime if one's not vigilant. What, else, what other aspects did you hear in the eight that Prabhupada mentioned? that you thought could help you, yes. The seventh point which mentioned that it has to be uh, removed in the beginning, otherwise uh, later it can stun the whole. Uh, An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You know who said that? 
Benjamin Franklin. He's the one who um, started the first fire department. There's a correlation there. Ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So uh, if you're very careful in the beginning before these things get started, then uh, you don't have to contend with them later. So it's better not to let them enter at all or, or take them out when they're very um, young and just beginning. Otherwise, they can grow into deep-rooted kinds of plants that choke out the garden and are very hard to remove later, right? Yes. Any other points that you heard in the eight? Often says at the lo uh, lotus feet of the pure devotee compared to the mad elephant who destroys the nicely grown garden. Yes. So you have to be very careful about offenses, especially towards devotees of the Lord, because this will ruin one's devotional garden altogether. So avoid offenses to devotees. Satyadev Prabhu. Microphone's just coming back. He's right behind you. We need a technical team. Please help me with the mic. Thank you. Okay, I got it. Today at Google, you were mentioning how the chanting of the holy name actually um, uh, it drowns or suppresses our, our, our past karma, our karmic tendencies like fault finding, really. Uh, just say you were born into a family of fault finders. You're probably going to end up being a professional fault finder, <laughs> right? So, but by the chanting of the holy name, uh, gradually these impressions or these tendencies are, are diminished. So this almost seems contradictory, like you, like you have to perform, you have to perform some independent action in order to uh, remove uh, these um, tendencies these conditioned tendencies, conditioned behaviors that are the weeds in the heart. So this is saying that one has to go in there and uproot them. It seems like uh, then you're not really depending on the holy name to do that. Yeah, but if you're a gardener, you, it, it works. this metaphor works better because you, uh, if you're chanting the holy name, then you'll become aware, if you're chanting sincerely, then Krishna gives you the intelligence to spot the, the faults. And uh, it's part of the chanting process. There's no difference. It, it's not like it's two separate things. Uh, and, uh, and in other words, by sincerely chanting, Tesham Satati Yuktanam Pajatam Priti Purvakam Dadami Bhudi Yogam Tam Dadam Yenamam Upayantite. Krishna says that if you try to do this sincerely, for instance, if you chant really good rounds, Krishna will give you insight into ways in which you can adjust your life so that you can avoid offenses. This is uh, the way in which it's part and parcel. It's not different from Krishna helping. Uh, Krishna, is, um, Krishna helps us in many different ways. For instance, he says he's the healing herb. When we were talking about uh, health and uh, in, in discussion when we were traveling, as the devotees were saying, uh, I take such and such a herb, it helps me with this. You know, people are in Ayurvedic doctors. And then one devotee said, well, I don't take anything, I depend on Krishna. And I, I talked to her later and I said, actually, uh, Krishna says he's the healing herb. So uh, how is it depending on Krishna if you reject herbs? And I said, not only that, uh, you know, Lakshman took herbs. Hanuman had to go get a whole mountain full of them, bring them back to service. So there's a way in which um, Krishna gives us intelligence and uh, when we use it that's part of the, the purification process and he helps us too there's a way uh, that Krishna talks about this uh, in various places that if one's sincerely chanting that he helps the devotee to remove the obstacles as well for instance, there are uh, ways in which he arranges for us to become disgusted with certain things. 
like the desire that I thought I wanted, he's, uh, Bhagavatam mentions. I want something, I'm chanting, I have that uh, anarta there within my heart. So then Krishna says, you're a sincere devotee, but you're really stupid too, because you, know, you still want this thing. So I'm gonna give it to you, but I'm gonna present it in a package where you're gonna think like, oh, I wish I didn't ask for this anymore. And, and he does that, for, especially for sincere practitioners, he makes these arrangements. In fact, it's mentioned at the end of the story of Sudama Brahman that uh, Krishna awarded him all this opulence. And uh, he was very poor, and he went to Krishna on the behest of his wife. And when he went there, he took four palmfuls of chipped rice. It, it wasn't the most opulent rice either. They borrowed it from the neighbors. He just wrapped it up in his torn cloth. He went and visited his friend, Krishna. They had been together in school back in Gurukul, got tr stranded in the forest. Krishna was so nice to him, so loving. He invited him in, he washed his feet, he embraced him, he fed him. And then um, when, he w when Sudama was leaving, Krishna said, I think you've brought something for me. And Sudama was too embarrassed to, to offer it. So uh, Krishna snatched it and he took, uh, as he took the, the, uh, the grains, uh, Lakshmi Devi said, that's enough. After taking a couple times, he said, that's enough, you can't take any more. Now I'm so obligated that I have to uh, make his uh, life more, his home, his dwelling, more opulent than the kingdom of heaven. So when he went home, everything had been transformed, although he didn't expect anything. And th there's... Um, a commentary by Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur at the end of that pastime where he says that Krishna detected Sudama was attached to austerity and to not having anything. So Krishna gave him uh, something else. He gave him this great wealth. He still remained completely detached from it. But Krishna is always there uh, for the sincere devotee making arrangements so that he becomes detached. Did that work? Is that your problem? Okay. Any uh, anybody else? Takeaways? Yes, Sundar. Just one point. Um, I mean, there are a lot of uh, takeaway points, but one point that struck me was that constant watering process um, in the previous section. Yeah. And it helps us to attain the goal. The constant watering process. Constant watering process. So uh, can you fill us in on that a little more? Like, um, um, like Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, um, Bhagavati Uttama Sloke, Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki, Nashta Prayasha Bhadresha, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, so by constantly engaging in the process of devotional service, the, all the abhadras or unwanted things just fall away. And uh, in your previous um, classes, you mentioned that uh, uh, that means at least uh, once a day of constant uh, engagement and chanting, hearing and reading Bhagavad yeah, Gita. Yeah, and the at least means then take advantage of other times when you can do more. For instance, when everybody else is increasing their hearing and chanting, like this is a month everyone's talking about. I'm hearing everywhere. Everyone's doing some extra. Like there's Bhagavad Gita. You chant one chapter. But if you also chant one chapter of Bhagavatam every day, you can add that on. And you can chant extra rounds. You can do more. And other times when you're around devotees who are doing more, then take that opportunity to, to double down and increase and try to get a taste for doing more. It'll have an effect. It's life-changing. If you, can, uh, if you can extend yourself and, and take more practice time to chant a good japa, to uh, hear more from Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavad Gita, it'll change your life. You'll be a different person. You'll see the world in a different way. You'll uh, experience for yourself that you're able to control your senses. And you'll, you'll begin to, to see the world in relationship with Krishna. This will happen by uh, the natural course of devotional service, especially if you have a submissive attitude and 
keep in a surrendered mode. Bhakti parushanu bhavu virakti ranyata traisa trika eka kala prapadya manasya yatasnatashtus tushti pushti shud apayonu gasam. This verse says that by uh, the surrender process, be very submissive and surrender to Krishna. Think I'm the servant of Krishna and go on serving him. Uh, then by that process, your bhakti will develop. And you'll also start seeing everything in the world in relationship to Krishna, in, in even the adversities that come to you. And then you'll also become a, develop a sense of detachment from the world, which is very hard to get. You can't buy that. It comes only by the mercy of Krishna. And the, the, um, the verse goes on to say that it's just like when you're hungry and you eat food, you naturally feel satisfied, correct? And you get nourished, and you also, your hunger goes away. Who's uh, just checked in on the telephone? Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna Shute Dev Prabhu, my obeisances to you. Jai. Jai. I, I just had a quick question, is that okay? Yes, of course. Yeah, just, you know, we're speaking a lot about becoming, you know, chanting more sincerely, becoming more sincere, and, you know, Prabhupada, of course, speaks about sincerity as the basis of all devotional service. So I'm, I'm asking, how, how can one incre improve, increase his sincerity? You know, uh, you know, how does that develop that sincerity so that we can actually advance nicely? Well, when you chant Japa, sit next to somebody who's more sincere than you are. <laughs> because it, has, it rubs off very quickly. If you sit next All right, to somebody... I'm, I'm, hopping, I'm hopping on a plane. I'll be up there <laughs> tomorrow morning. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we can sit next to you. <laughs> but it has a, association has a, a direct and very immediate effect in our lives. If you associate with somebody in this world, because we're tiny, we're tatasta. I've noticed all the time that the living entities flip. They say they think one way for a while, and then they get association with somebody else, talks to them, and blah, 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 blah. And next thing is, oh, yeah, I changed my mind. It's like, how'd you do that? So I'm a living entity. That's what I do. You know, so <laughs> I, I, I take advantage of this principle of sangha. This is one of the main principles of devotional service. Find people that are more advanced than you and go and serve them and bring them something and say, you know, uh, can I get you more stuff? And then if eventually they'll, they'll, they'll say, you know, here, just sit here, you know, and then you'll be hanging out with them. Next thing you know, you'll be picking up the same vibration that they have in their heart. By service, uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, tadvidi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadakshanti te ganam jnanina stattvadarshina. He said, be on the lookout for people who have this... Uh, a spiritual vision they've already developed it they have a sincerity and uh you know this is the most valuable thing and then it says three ways that you approach them it's a prani pot go there in a very humble mood and offer yourself uh then he says sevaya serve them and also he says uh, prashna ask them good questions and by these three things then you get everything uh, you, uh, their heart will open up and they'll, they'll hand it over. They'll hand over the goods. They'll come flying out. And then you can pick up the same mood that those people have just by uh, association. Thank you, Shruti Dev Prabhu. Go pray, Jai, thank, thank you so much. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Sri Mante Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shivasari Gora Bhaktivinoda. Sorry, I'm just thinking of a tune.
great stuff. Uh, there you go. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Bolo. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Rama, Rama, Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, 
coming to Iskandar Silicon Valley on this Wednesday night. Uh, this is the second day of Purushottamas. Take as much advantage as possible. We aren't guaranteed any extra time in this world. So don't take anything for granted. We're going to have a kirtan uh, experience now, uh, including dancing for those who like to dance. And we can m now move all the asans to the back. We'll roll up this carpet and make the dance floor available. And take a couple of minutes uh, to get yourself situated uh, for this special Artique ceremony. Thank you very much, everybody. And we thank all the 
listeners and watchers who joined in online, everyone please say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. A little louder. Hare Krishna. Twice as loud. Hare Krishna. Three times as loud. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Gaur Premanande Haribo. Hare.